Hey, welcome to this Linux crash course. You know, whether you are a novice, an intermediate, or maybe an advanced Linux user, hopefully you'll find something in this series of videos that will help you out. I find that in the number of the projects that I make videos about, I'm usually in Linux somewhere and I'm tooling around. I just thought I would put together this series of videos to kind of capture some of that knowledge on how to administer and manage those Linux instances. This first video is just a little bit about history of Linux, and then I'm gonna show you how to set up uh, an environment so that you can have a little sandbox that you can play in and follow along. So first, there's a number of resources here. On the web, I have a Linux-crash-course on my GitHub account. I'm gonna to try to update these notes as we go. So as you, if you look at the outermost readme, you're gonna see all the different chapters. I'm gonna to try to make a video on most of this stuff. I may skip some things later on because a lot of these are just kind of self-explanatory, but we're really gonna focus in on introduction to Linux in this one. You know, the biggest reason I think a lot of people need some kind of capacity or capability in Linux is because Linux is so prevalent these days, especially when you're talking about the cloud or web applications, almost all of those are deployed to some kind of Linux server. So having some fundamental skills in Linux is a good thing. And I'm not gonna cover too much here on my notes. What I do wanna do is you know pull up a brief history of Linux that um, it's an article written by DigitalOcean and just scan through this real quick. But you can see that Linux has its roots in Unix. Now Unix was an operating system that was created by uh, AT&T Bell Labs. So it was a project that was there. There was an initial project called Multix, which fizzled out, but then that turned into Unix. You know, AT&T was a very large organization. They had a monopoly on the telephone system at the time, uh, and people were just becoming aware that you know, the licensing for these operating systems may be a concern. Really, that was kind of the, I would say, the birth years of open source. There's a lot of open source going on now, but it kind of really started back in these days. What you see is a lot of open source. Richard Stallman was a big figure in the GNU project. And that GNU project created a lot of components that you see inside of what we would consider as Linux today. That one of the components of an operating system is the kernel. Now the Linux kernel was written by Linus Torvalds and that Linux kernel combined with the other GNU components really kind of make up what we would consider Linux today. And at one point there was quite a discussion, let's say, between uh, Richard Stallman and the GNU project and everybody on the naming. So even today when we think of Linux, we really think of kind of the whole operating system. But the reality is, is Linux really is the kernel and then there's a lot of other components that are packaged together to make the whole operating system. And here's an article by Richard Stallman, you know, written back in those days. And if you scroll down to the highlighted text, you know, he's even kind of debating and trying to push forward this naming convention that we don't want to ambiguously name something. Unfortunately, I think Richard kind of lost this battle and that Linux is the whole thing. We're just when we talk about Linux today, it's the whole distro. That's usually what we're talking about. And speaking of distros, you know, a distro is a different flavor of Linux. You know, there's a lot of different distros. There's probably hundreds of distros. Some are more popular than the other. And here's a list of the most popular distributions. When you have to administer a system, probably you're going to end up on one of these systems. And the whole lecture series that we're going to be using is I'm going to be using an Ubuntu box and I'm gonna show you in a little bit how to set that up. One of the key differences that we're gonna find in these Linux systems is a lot of them are what we call headless. And there's no kind of UI that's sitting on top of this where you get to use a mouse and you're clicking on stuff and there's no real visual aspect of this. You're gonna have a window and you're gonna type into the window commands and we call that window the terminal window. On Windows, sometimes we call that the command prompt but almost always in Linux, it's the terminal window. That's gonna be some kind of shell that we're gonna to use to execute commands. And so we'll get into that shell and we'll start learning the different commands and how to navigate around and, and see what we can learn. All right, so I'm gonna go over to my Amazon console and we're gonna set up an Ubuntu instance over here that you can use as a sandbox. 
And it's important that you have a sandbox because one of the best ways to learn is to get in there and actually do things. Let's go ahead and set this up. The first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna set up a VPC. This is a virtual private cloud and it's just kind of the networking layer. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new VPC and this is gonna be a very simple VPC. We're gonna select VPC and more and you can see all the different things over here. That's even more too complex. Uh, I am gonna name this uh, my Linux sandbox. So we'll name it that way. Uh, default tenancy, that's fine. The number of availability zones, we're only gonna do one. So that's gonna drop this down a lot here. And the number of public subnets, we're gonna do one. I don't need a private subnet at all. Uh, no NAT gateways, no VPC endpoints. So now if I come up and I look at this thing, this can get pretty simple. So I'm gonna have one public subnet. That's where we're gonna put our EC2 instance in a little bit. And it's got an internet gateway. That's all I really need here. And we're gonna click the create VPC button. It'll take a couple moments, not very long, but it'll create this thing. And we can view our VPC and the resource map looks exactly like we saw. Next thing is we're gonna put an EC2 instance in this uh, public subnet. So I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna type EC2 and we're gonna go to the EC2 kind of services. We are gonna launch a new instance. I'm gonna call this uh, my Linux sandbox again. And when I come down here, it's important that we choose the distro. Remember we talked about the different distros. So here's a Linux distro, here's a Mac OS distro, Ubuntu. Um, you can put Windows on here, Red Hat. We're gonna go with Ubuntu, 64-bit. Amazon has a free tier. So as long as you stay with under a certain number of hours and a certain budget usage, uh, it won't cost you anything to use. If you go over that, you will have to pay. We need a key pair name. And what this key pair is, this is how you log into the Linux distro. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new key pair just for this sandbox. I'm gonna call this my Linux sandbox. So I'm keeping a kind of a consistent naming convention because that helps me track everything down later on when I need to delete all this stuff. So I can just find it quickly. So Linux-Sandbox is gonna be private key format .pem. When I click create the key pair, I'm gonna be prompted to save this key pair locally. And I'm gonna put this on my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create key pair. Now here I'm prompted now to save this locally. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my desktop and I'm just gonna drop this right on my desktop. So now I've created the key pair, I've got it selected here. The network, this is in not in the correct network yet, so we're gonna edit this. Uh, we are gonna put it in our uh, Linux Sandbox VPC. This is gonna automatically choose the only subnet that we have, which is the public subnet. We're gonna auto assign a public IP address here. And the next section is the firewall settings. Amazon controls access to these EC2 instances using what they call security groups. And so we have to create a security group to allow us to connect to our sandbox. And so I'm just gonna keep with my naming convention. And the only thing I'll do is I'll just append an SG-SG for security group here, but that's my sandbox name. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna paste it as part of that. And I'm gonna keep the inbound security group rules the same. So it's already set up to allow SSH traffic on port 22. So we're gonna keep it there. One thing you could do is if you wanted to secure this, you could instead of making it from anywhere, the source, which is 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, I could isolate it to my own IP address. I'm not gonna do that because I'm not gonna have this on that long. So I'm just gonna keep that the way it is. And storage is fine. Let's look in the advanced details. I don't think there's anything in here we're gonna change. Okay, so this all looks really good, and we are just going to uh, launch this instance. So there's only one instance, we're gonna launch it. And the nice thing about these cloud environments is it does not take long for these instances to kind of get launched and be up and running here. So you can see if I go to just the running states, here's my Linux sandbox, and it's already up and running. It's still doing some initialization. Uh, if I click on this, what I'm gonna see down here is I'm gonna see a public IP address. I need this public IP address combined with that key pair that I created earlier, and that's how I'm gonna get access to this.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this IP address. Now it's on the clipboard. I'm going to go to my a terminal window that I have around. And in this terminal window, what I'm going to do is, first of all, let's see where we're at. I'm in this directory. I'm on in my desktop in a Linux-Sandbox uh, directory. In this directory, I actually moved that PEM file. Remember, I copied it to my desktop before. But if I look inside here, so here's my .pem file. So to connect to this EC2 instance, which is running on Amazon's cloud, I'm going to need to SSH, which is secure shell. And I'm going to use a dash I command because that dash I allows me to specify an identity file. And the identity file that I want to use is right here in this uh, um, directory, and it's called linux-sandbox.pem. And then I need to specify the user that I'm going to log in as. All of the EC2 instances have a default user of Ubuntu. And then I, I place that IP address at the end. So that's the simple command here, ssh-i. I put the identity file, the PEM file that I downloaded from Amazon. I specify the user and the IP address. When I first connect to one of these new EC2 instances, you're gonna get this kind of warning. So like, are you sure you wanna connect? And it's just kind of saying it's never seen this connection before. It doesn't recognize this IP address. Do you kind of trust it? And we're gonna say yes to this. And then we're gonna get this warning. So if you did it exactly like I did it, that private key does not have the correct permissions. And ironically, this is some of the stuff that we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn about permissions uh, in some of these videos. But for now, if I take a look at this uh, file, it has a read permission from all of the other users. So it says that it requires that the private key are not accessible by others, only accessible by you know, this are Craven's user. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a command to set the permissions here. And I think that I'm gonna lock, keep these. So R and W, R is a four, W is a two, so that's a six. And then we're gonna put a zero, zero. I think that'll give me what I want. So now when I look at this, I'm the only one that has permissions here. Not even the group does. So we're gonna try our SSH command again. and now it allows us to connect. Making sure that the privileges on that identity file you know, are secure enough was important and it enforces you to do that. So that's it, we're ready for all of the rest of the videos. Now, if you found that little bits at the end kind of confusing, don't worry, because we have videos coming up here that we're gonna talk about permissions. We're gonna talk about changing the permissions on different files. We're gonna talk about uh, SSH a little bit more in detail. So for now, sit back, relax, take a couple of big breaths, and I'll see you in the next video.